This is for 804. This is on week, I think week five, out of the past and misrepresentation. Um, I spent a long time going through these and took a lot of notes, so I do have a lot to say about this. Um, first of all, um, the one question about whether you should focus on the local community or more on the distant future. I had a lot of different uh, quotes on that or different ad uh, opinions. Um, I noticed that Jarman and Grace talked about the local community. Um, Micah, uh, Andy, um, now Amanda was current community, and let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Jarman, uh, also in the current community, I think it's Taylor, right? Uh, I didn't get the first name down, I was so busy. But uh, there was a real mix there, uh, whether you should focus, and most of the focus, interestingly enough, was on disabilities or special needs, because uh, I don't know how many of you are uh, are SPED majors or have been, or but a lot of you are very sensitive to that, and this is a very good development. Um, there was one mention of at your at your in college that your school actually uh, started out multicultural and then kind of uh, involved dis issues of disabilities. Um, I think that was uh, German, yes. Sorry, I'm using last name. I found the first name right in front of me. And, um, but uh, that was a very substantial quote and a good, a good way of uh, putting, um, putting things in perspective because it, I always have a problem multicultural being ethnic and then you talk about racial and in my next week, I'm going to talk about race. Race isn't even really a legitimate term. It is a socially constructed term. It's not fake news, but it's, it's, it's literally surface structure, not understanding what's beneath. Um, and then um, another, another area that was really strong in here um, was... Um, talking about young women and role models and whether issues, you know, I, what I thought of when I was doing this uh, discussion, when I was reading through it again, is how powerful the discussion is among women about these issues and how I literally see, never see anything like our discussion with guys involved. Nothing again. I know we got a couple of guys in the class, but I meant if I wondered if I had like 20 guys in the class, if I could even begin to get this kind of development and discussion. Because when I printed this out, I had to keep shrinking it down to get to 55 pages. That's how long it went when you printed it out. And I cut down the font and everything because it was 86 or something to begin with. Um, and people say online doesn't use copy paper. <laughs> I have to have it because I like to read things. I can't just look on a screen and mark them. But it was very strong stuff. Now I'm going to go through some of the quotes because, um, and I marked quite a number of them, so most people are going to get some commentary here. Um, the first one I had, uh, I think it was page, yeah, number one was from Grace. You talk about, uh, I guess my view is lucky. We, uh, we need to not let multicultural dictate our respect toward one another. The new way I break down the word multicultural is multi of culture, as in many cultures, many different cultures that make up who we are. This needs to be expressed in schools to limit the misconception of the word multiculturalism as just being of different ethnicities. That's one thing I just mentioned. I just thought that needed to be needed to be mentioned right there. I hope I didn't mix these up. Forgive me if I'm a little slow. I'm getting slower. <laughs> um, a second one from Taylor Hand, and uh, you talked about focusing on the future. You also mentioned about um, what things will be impacting our, our kids in the future. 
20, 30, 40 years from now. What now we can't anticipate what all those are be will be, but we can anticipate like the quite a discussion here about concept of beauty, uh, the way women are treated, uh, and and to some extent, to be fair, the way men are treated. Uh, there was a nice talk talking here about guys going into early childhood, and how you know traditionally there weren't a lot of elementary teachers that were men. I remember when I was a kid in elementary school, there was like a wandering math and art teacher that were men. So technically they're elementary, but they weren't in a classroom per se. Those were always women. Um, maybe they'll help increase the work and, and the pay as if we integrate more. Um, so Taylor, you mentioned that. And then another one I had, give me skipping around. This is from Joanne who had a quote about disabilities and attitudes there. Um, people that are not in the special education field, or even some that do not, or even some that are, do not see the potential of all students to learn. Each student learns in his or her own, to, to his or her own ability. Maybe they're learning to walk without assistance down the hallway or how to dress themselves, or how to use a communication device, because they're still learning things that are important for them to know. This is something that is important for all students, teachers, administrators, and community members to know. Each person is beautifully and wonderfully made and has a purpose on this earth. It is unfair for people to put limits on others, especially for those who can't stand up for themselves. And this was also mentioned by somebody else for uh, teaching those that may be minorities or different um, um, Latinos or refugee students that somehow they have some limitations because of maybe their language skills are, are they don't speak English so they can't be mathematicians or they can't be you know we know that's not true we know they're uh, we know that, that when we put expectations especially low expectations we take that future away from that student. So th these are really important things that are set in here. Um, and then Becky, you mentioned false news, and I think that really struck me as important because uh, I realize misrepresentation's a little dated, it's the 90s. And it's a little bit about women in media, you know, Katie Couric and stuff like that. but. Um, oh gosh, there was a lady, Anne, Anne, I can't think of her last name. She's a Asian. She was on the Today Show and they took her off. And I, I want to say Anne something, it's not Couric because that's Katie Couric, but Anne was, was taken off the air and, and this was before Matt Lauer was fired. It was about four years after that that he was fired for a lot of bad behavior. And it was said that Matt Lauer was kind of allowed to run things at NBC Today Show. And it turned out he was had a lot of issues. Um, but Ann was kind of forced off, off television. She clashed with some people. And NBC really put her in a bad way. And I, I often think of her when reading stuff. But even though that's kind of an older 90s type video, it still shows how women, how there were expectations. Uh, even in England now, it sounds weird, but the women are all expected to wear high heels at work. And I thought, how? I, I never quite understood high heels, but um, I mean, I know they're a fashion. But the idea that they, they need to be worn in the office, I don't understand that at all. Um, but that, that sounds like a lot of sexism, you know. And uh, I don't know if you've heard, but in Australia, if a woman in the, in the parliament in Australia has her arms bared, she'll be excluded from the floor until she dresses properly. I couldn't believe that. I just assumed Australia was a fairly open country and didn't have such attitudes. We use the word conservative and liberal, but that's not really appropriate. It's more just sexist. 
those words get into politics and then we're, we get everything balled up and then we argue about the wrong things. Um, here's another quote. Um, uh, I think it's number five. If I could find it. Oh, um, I think it's from, let's see. I think I put down two here. This one is also from Taylor, Taylor Jarman. Sorry, that is right. Um, I've, I feel like in the last couple of years, people have been trying to shape the image back to loving your body. You do see a lot more models over the typical five, 10, 100 pounds image, and that has made some progress. This is amazing. I feel women of all sizes and shapes need to love and embrace their bodies. We need to create a society where you don't feel any less of a woman because of an ad or a media post. Uh, and the small women too struggle as well as, as larger women. I was thinking about this and I was thinking about the whole weight issue. Um, I've tried to lose weight and things like that, but it also impacts men. Uh, it's mostly, it's always been directed at women, but the fact is that we have an obesity problem in our society. And, but people attribute that to some kind of personal moral failing. And that really goes back to when people look down on people and they, they had some, when people originally, many years ago, biblical times, when people had a disability, individuals would say, well, that was because of a sin of their grandfather or their people, or if, they, if they're in this shape in life, they deserve it. It's kind of like what goes around comes around cosmologically. Um, but th that, that is impacting a lot of people that are, uh, if they're overweight or, and that comes down to what some mentioned about consumerism, uh, Annika mentioned about consumerism in our society and, and, and people see eating, uh, we obviously there's money to be made in getting people to eat it's just the same as using certain aspirin or selling drugs, legal or illegal. But people, um, the, the mistreatment of people, and and now we have some concerns in society about health issues, but there's still a lot of resistance. That, well, people have freedom of choice. We shouldn't have the government get too involved in this. But the fact is that it, I think at the mercy of pure capitalism, you can you can make money and literally destroy people, whether they're spending money on food or clothing or whatever. That, that they don't have good control of that. Now, how you solve that, I don't know. I know, you know, I know a lot of people don't want the government getting too involved, but the fact is that it is an issue. Um, this is a beautiful uh, quote I wanted to bring up uh, from uh, Carrie. It's about, I was weighed down by my daughter's preschool, down by my daughter's preschool teacher after school one day, she wanted to tell me that my daughter had went out of her way to be friends with a little girl who had a learning disability. This old girl didn't have too many friends, so this melted my heart, and this melted my heart too. Uh, showing mercy to others is very touching, and we know that we see our own kid, and I've seen situations. Uh, my son Zachary is now a father and grown up, but when he was in college, he went out and did a friends project where he it's kind of like a big brother to this little kid. And I didn't know anything about it. He never told me. And he did every Thursday for a very long time. And even on Halloween, we take out him and his uh, two brothers, or two sisters, to go Halloween trick-or-treating. And this is not something that we taught our son to do, but it's something he wanted to do. And um, I was so proud, you can imagine. You know, I just said, oh, my gosh, he... He's so loyal, and this little kid, I think he had the same name, Zachary, as my son, which is kind of ironic. Take him out bowling or out to the Big Apple here in Kearney. And um, it's my clock again, it's six. Um, so that really, that really touched me. Um, and then I want to mention that I know there's situations, uh, I didn't ask this question, but what do you do when, when popular celebrities or figures make derogatory remarks, politicians about certain groups of people. How do you handle that? You know, I don't, I'm not gonna sit here 
to get into politics per se, but there are certain things that I, I don't tolerate. So I always wonder that, um, you know, we, we happen to live in an age, especially with Instagram and stuff, people are quick to just rip, uh, rip women, rip celebrities, rip individuals. Um, they see something, they think, did they really say that? Well, sometimes they did, and sometimes, sometimes it was misinterpreted, or, the, or they didn't know the situation. But they're quick to attack. We live in a society that wants instant blood. It's like having a snake or something just right now. You twitch and he bites you. Uh, Kim, you had a very good remark on ECU. Um, the idea of, of men getting involved in early childhood education, that's a wonderful. And I've noticed several students when we do school visits here in TU100 that you'll find people a lot of times going to middle school, ironically, when most people are afraid of middle school. But now, you know, most people must have had terrible middle school experience. I don't remember it. You know, I don't think I was conscious till I got to college, but I do remember some people just being miserable in, in middle school, being teased and stuff, bullies. I've got the video bully coming up for you too. Um, and uh, Kim, you really liked um, how important it is to reverse discrimination, getting men to enter into the field. And I, I think that was certainly worth commenting on. Um, now, some other things. Um, um, Amanda, let's see, what do I have here? You had a male student take um, FCS classes, uh, textiles and design, and uh, same thing with nursing. We, we're getting used to male nurses, but for a long time, people just assumed that teachers and nurses were always women secretaries were always women. Now we use the word associate or office associate. I think that's an attempt to get away from this, the uh, assumption, the stereotype. Um, now, Annika had a very interesting one uh, talking about consumerism and credit cards. And you mentioned in here about your daughter noticing there were po weren't pockets on her dress, but boys had pockets. And I think this is probably a difference from Sweden, uh, especially someone referring to um, someone as so-and-so's wife rather than by her first name. I remember in Oklahoma, and this bothered me at the time tremendously. And uh, they're obviously in a very religious guy, he was a minister or something, asked his wife, I said, what, her name, I didn't know her name. And she said to me, uh, some people call me Barb, but my husband prefers Barbara. And she said it like her husband had named her that he got to decide. It kind of bothered me. I don't know about you, but it just struck me like, you can be your own, can't you have your own name? I mean, I don't know. Um, but, uh, okay, um, you also mentioned uh, thinking about the more distant future uh, credit cards, which is a big issue. Credit cards and consumerism is linked to whether it's overeating, overpurchasing things, a, a, a total preoccupation with having more and more stuff. I mean, I don't have more and more stuff. You can look around my office, how fair it is. Um, but most of it's cheap, I will say that. I do hoard books, among other things. Um, but this idea of, of consumerism and how it kind of eats away at, at us as, um, whether it's finding a fancy dress or, 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 or equity among the sexes in terms of helping with the housework, helping with raising the children, et cetera. I'm real proud of my son, Zachary. You know, they're pretty even up on all that. They don't seem to have any attitudes. I mean, that's all I know. It seems like he and, his, he and, and uh, Adanya have a 
really uh, equitable marriage, you know, from what I know. What do you know? But um, uh, I have my grandson. I got to see him today and uh, yesterday and took a picture of him. I may send it to you. And he's just a happy, well-rounded, I'd say chubby, but I don't want to use the word chubby, but healthy and growing child. So it brought tears to my eyes. Um, but I do, do notice when Annika's, and she talked about how Sweden emphasizes equity, whereas in the United States, we, we don't get the kind of maternity, paternity leave, although it's better. My son got some paternity leave to spend time at home. Uh, uh, but that, that was quite a contrast, your parts of Europe and the United States. Um, other things, I'm going to try to finish up because I know I'm going to talk too long. Andy, um, I had one on here. Oops, one of my poppers fell down. I scared myself. Uh, you were talking, um, oh, Becky, I want to get to Becky first. You were talking about LB, LGBTQT and uh, Bayard Rustin, who is a major figure in civil rights who has been basically s disappeared from the history books because he was gay and they knew he was gay but they he just didn't you know he paved the way but because that civil rights movement was not comfortable with gay issues they, they basically put him away politically he just kind of faded from the forefront they didn't want to tackle that um that was in a nice piece. I just wanted to bring it up because I, I can tell you about AIDS. And I know when AIDS was first discovered, it was really scary and people didn't know how it spread and they didn't know if it spread with a kiss and, and people had all kinds of primitive ideas. Uh, there was a uh, rock huts and had AIDS and that was a shock to Hollywood, which they didn't realize or they had hidden the fact there was uh, many people in Hollywood in the past were gay and it was just hidden away. Um, but um, there was a lot made in these National Enquirer and stuff that Linda Evans, an actress, had kissed him during the show. And they said, was this the kiss of death? And they just, you know, trying to sell papers, scaring people, they actually brought about extreme anti-AIDS and anti-gay discrimination. Uh, so serious that if you know about Ryan White, that's his name, Ryan White, just like spelled just like that. He was a young man in Indiana who was a hemophiliac. And because he had to get uh, treatment with uh, blood products, he was exposed to the AIDS virus and contracted AIDS before there was a cure. And he died after about two years. And John, Elton John, uh, Michael Jackson, and many other stars, not all, by the way, rallied to his defense and stood up for him and stood against discrimination against children and adults with AIDS. Uh, people were still afraid. They didn't know how it was spread. Turned out it was through blood, blood and sexual contact. But people didn't know that. And, and here's how serious it was. There was a couple idiotic people in Kokomo, Indiana, who actually petitioned to have Ryan White excluded from their school, even though medical people said he wasn't going to be a threat to other students. And it drove him from that school. And he went to another high school in Indiana, and they went to that community and tried to drive him out of that high school. And I remember how horrible it was. He was being pursued by people. Um, he had to get protection. You know, it was like someone was threatening to hurt him. He was a little skinny kid. He was about 11 years old. And he lost his life. And now they have the Ryan White Foundation. But that was an example of just fear, just like the plague. If you ever read uh, um, Journal of a Plague Year by Daniel Defoe, it's a wonderful book talking about the plague in England in the 1660s. It was actually written 50 years later as a propaganda book. 
to help remind people who had forgotten how bad the plague was. Uh, but people in those years didn't know what caused the plague. So they went run around killing all the cats and the cats killed the rats. So they got rid of the cats and the rats were everywhere and people ignored the rats and people believed the fleas from the, uh, now they think after studying it that it was spread in different ways that it may have initially started with fleas from rats, but it spread from person to person through contact. And that was the bubonic aspect of it. I don't want to get into it. I always liked Edgar Allan Poe and the Mask of Red Death, you know, was, but, um, but this primeval fear people had of this disease just drove them crazy. They, and so they, people actually used the very fear of the plague. They used it on AIDS and they said, no, your kid's going to get AIDS if this, if the hemophilia kids are allowed to go to school. So it made it, made it like there were animals being hunted. It was the cruelest thing you can imagine. Um, and it was both anti, anti-gay, even though when they found out, no, it can be spread through any sexual contact, you know. Oh, well, you know, you know, people didn't want to talk about that, and then they, they, they kind of ignored it. But it was just amazing to me. It was, it was scary. It was just scary. Um, I know Dor- Doris Day stood up for uh, Rock Hudson, a lot of people pretended they didn't know people anymore. Um, a couple of people, um, oh, I can't, the guy plays the piano and will come to me after I'm off the video, but um, um, a lot of people um, that were artists were in the stage and actors uh, died of AIDS. Uh, you probably know a lot about because there's been education and people don't worry about it. Okay. We also have developed a treatment, you know, now we're dealing with Zika and people are afraid to go to Florida or Central America and, and you have to be scientific about it. I mean, obviously you may avoid certain places, but people are not usually uh, a cause. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up because I remember living through that and being afraid because I didn't understand what it was. I didn't have any students, but at the time, I, being a hypochondriac, I was kind of sensitive to issues like that. Um, Micah, you also mentioned that we need to look for the distant future. Um, we need to have a vision for young girls of all ages. Um, and Anna Worth mentioned that. Um, um, gosh, what did I want to? I guess I didn't write down. Um, I think it's, sorry, I get the names wrong, but I, my, I can't even read my own handwriting. Uh, Micah, you, uh, as I mentioned, mentioned distant future and Amanda were, sorry. Amanda, you mentioned that we need, and I, I thought about, we need videos of different age appropriate for children to learn about things. Of course, you need an accepting community that says they can learn about things. And then I know we get in sex education and that's bordering on touching some of these areas. Um, uh, Andy, you had a nice quote I wrote down. Um, I really enjoyed both videos and I watched them. I noted to myself that both of these videos are still present or uh, are relevant to 2019. I do think there have been more voices opening up to the Me Too movement, which some people have criticized as being out of control. You know, it doesn't mean there aren't extremes at at times. Human activity may not always be logical. But you mentioned Alicia Keys, I didn't know this, didn't wear makeup. And Ashley Graham promoting beauty no matter what you look like or your orientation. And you say, for females, I think we're just playing a tug of war with ourselves. We see women making, oops, I guess I didn't keep the rest of it. What did I do there? But anyhow, I just liked your quote there about tug of war and that the the battle is sometimes within the, the female community as opposed to educating young men, which I thought about. I'm sure that's happening, but the Me Too movement exposed just horrible situations. Also abuse in religious, in uh, schools, in all kinds of situations, child abuse. People don't want to think about it. You, you open up and you hear more, you know, whether it's at a military academy or in a church or in a 
and schools. Um, there's a lot of darkness under the human culture and seem like you stir it up, you just find more and more of it. Um, so I think this was good. Um, Taylor Wusk, you said, I think the aim of multicultural education should be the future, but to change the future, we have to study the past. And I like that because we have to look back and see patterns. And that's why culture and history are very important. Uh, the AIDS epidemic can be a classic study for future encounters with illnesses or illnesses spread in certain ways. Um, I, I remember really racist things being said about Ebola and trying to connect it to Obama. I, there were signs put up in a certain town near Kearney where it said, we know where Ebola came from. And and it had something about President Obama. And it was only up for a day, but the fact somebody did something stupid like that. I mean, connecting a, a disease in Africa with some present threat. Um, that And that's not political in a sense of conservatives, just ignorant, you know. Uh, uh, Joey Blessing, uh, Josie, sorry. Um, in my opinion, it should be more done in terms of informing students and others as to how feminism and pro-female environment is essential and as a human rights issue. I agree with the issue. Uh, well, a lot of videos how women are sexualized, valued in terms of their beauty or age. Other issues are prevalent, dealing with health issues, uh, reproductive issues, maternal mortality rates going up. I realize these things get involved with everything from abortion to birth control to religious um, religious opinions, uh, no doubt about it. Um, I guess you have to figure out what point do you, do you draw the line, or maybe what point the government will draw the line. But um, I guess being civil to each other is a good way to start out and trying to make, make make this work. Uh, so a lot of you chose um, chose that we should focus on present groups. I think certainly in your school, it's the best way to start because you can practice with students that have disabilities, with English language learners, with minority groups in your community. So I hope this is, you know, I wanted to respect your discussion because I spent a lot of time on it. Uh, this stuff's good reading, actually. I know you probably don't have time to go through it, but you can look for parts and, and, uh, and there's a lot of wisdom in here, certainly more than I could ever impart to you. So I'm gonna shut up now and try to cut this off so it's not too long. Thank you.